Good morning everybody, Job Lamont Millet here. I hope you're going well. I'm coming to you today from Paris. Well, I can't really see in Paris because over there that is Paris. I'm just outside the main circle of Paris. So today's vlog, we're going to be talking about Dalida. You know, diva, French, Italian songstress, musician, actress, born in Egypt. So let's have a bit of a read through my notes that I've been writing for the last year. So, her name was Dalida, born the 17th of January 1933 in Cairo, Egypt. She died on either the 2nd or 3rd of May 1987. Which we have to, I'll just stick with the 3rd of May. Uh, her birth name was Yolanda Christina Gilotti. That's definitely Italian. Um, she was born in Cairo, Egypt to Italian parents. Uh, uh, parents were uh, Pietro and Film Filomena. Uh, yeah, my mother's main name was uh, Giuseppe. She had two brothers, Orlando and Bruno. Uh, and she was uh, her ancestral actually came from the southern Italy, uh, Serena Stretta. She wore glasses as a child due to an eye operation, due to schoolyard bullying. The leader threw them away. The Allied forces in Egypt, they took away her father in 1940 because it was Italian. You gotta remember, like, at the time Egypt was not really independent, it still had British control. So anybody who was Italian was considered a spy and was taken away to a concentration camp. So her father was in that camp for around five years and when he came back, he was really aggressive to I believe his mother, and then he actually died of a brain aneurysm the same year. The death of Dalida's father would influence her search for a male partner in her life. You know, it's kind of like how daughters, they all have their love affair for their fathers, and then when they grow up they want to you know, have like a father-like figure, I believe. The mother did not approve of Dalida becoming a model. When Dalida came second in a beauty pageant in the 1950s, the mother chopped off her long hair as a punishment. Giuseppina gave Yolanda her blessing to be a model. In 1954, Yolanda won Miss Egypt. In 1955, she competed for Egypt in the Miss World's 1955 title that held at the Lycan Ballroom in London. But Yolanda did not compete. In the end, Egypt had pulled out over the Suez Canal Crisis, which happened a year later. By 1954, Yolanda became known as the Lila. The name was used a lot within Egypt. Marco de Gastin casted her in the Mask of Tutankhamun, a movie set in Egypt. Niazim Mustafa casted her in a glass and a cigarette in 1955. So, Christmas Day 1954, the leader moved from Cairo to Paris. Her first neighbour was Alan Delon. The leader couldn't land any acting roles in 1955, just encouraged her to sing. Roland Berger was her teacher. Berger gave her lesson seven days a week. Berger yelled, but the leader yelled louder. She would slam the door but return the next day. It was like a typical diva. Berger put her in the cabaret called Le Drop Dior. Uh, Jacques pa Paoli and Bruno Cotuatrix La Ville in this land at the Olympia. Uh, Alfred Marcher told her to change the stage name as it was similar to, to Samson and Delilah. So, Delilah became the leader. April 9th, 1956. The leader participated in the singing contest Les Numeros et de Deman. Eddie Barkley and Lucien Boris couldn't decide what to do that night. Barkley wanted to film, Morrissey wanted to watch a competition. 421 Dice Game sealed the fate as um, Kotrix tagged along. The leader won the night and had a move with Buckley Morrison that night. Luke Wen gave the leader his card. He lived at 26 Rue Francelin. Uh, Barco uh, Negro and Amelia Rodriguez. Eddie, Eddie's Barclay's office was on 20 Rue de Madrid. The meeting happened on the, uh, the 2nd of May 1956. Morrissey was responsible for promoting the leader, booking his shows at Olympia. Two weeks of Bobino, Morrissey asked Jacques Laurent to create a French version of Goulang Goulangi 
And then, yeah, there was a song that being, you know, number one for many weeks, I believe. Yes. Bambino was number one in Canada, Belgium, Switzerland, France, so all around the, the France phone world, world. Knocked off Doris days, whatever it will be, will be. Number one for 39 weeks, making it the longest time since number one in the world. I mean, longer than uh, Jessica Cito was on the US Billboard charts for over 70 weeks. 1958, toured to France, the leader toured around the country. She toured Algeria. 1958, the leader was in New York City with Marcy when she met. Norman Grant, the Yanks wanted to give Delita a 15 year contract in Hollywood. Delita turned down to focus on building a French audience. 959 tour of France, Egypt, Italy, and Germany. So you can, you can see that she went back to like Egypt for a tour. Okay, uh, then the Itsy Bitsy Bitsy Bikini, a cover that American song in French, became the first Yeah Yeah number one. Delita was even a fan of Yeah Yeah when it started. Lucien Morris was her first husband, married in 1961, but he, but she dumped him in 1962. He committed suicide at 7 Rue de Yanka on the 11th of September 1970. Jean Sebesky, the actor, was with the leader for two years, 1961 to 1963. And then she was dating Luigi Tenko, an Italian singer, between 1966 and 1967. He committed suicide after the song, Chiao Mora Chiao was eliminated in the singing contest. His death has been sparked and he was either murdered or suicide. But I guess, you know, him losing a singing contest, being so depressed, so overwhelmed, him. it's kind of sad however the ball to his head. In, uh, on the 27th of January 1967. Okay, uh, let's see. Then, uh, she was with Richard... Chang Frey from 73 to 81. He died in 1983 of carbon monoxide poisoning at his house in Saint Tropez. She was really influential to Israeli singer Mike Grant, but then he also committed suicide by jumping a a off his balcony uh, in 1975 at 6 Rue in Lager, which I'll have to make a small vlog about him, but he's uh, buried in Israel. December 1976, she was, uh, sorry, December 1976, she was 34. The lady became pregnant after a fling with a 22-year-old man. Uh, she became infertile after having a botched abortion operation by an unlicensed doctor, I believe. So then, the leader also toured Saigon, even during the time of the Vietnam War. The, Le Corne de Twist was stopped because the South Vietnamese slaughter was a political act. 26th of February 1967, Delita attempted suicide. She spent five days in a coma at uh, the Prince of Wales Hospital, 50, 33 Avenue, George V. Delita toured around the world, you know, Vietnam, Poland, Canada, Algeria, Egypt, Seychelles, Portugal, Iran, Yugoslavia, India, Lebanon, Gabon, Tahiti, the United States, and Brazil. And she didn't just sing in Italian or French, she, spent, she sang in Hebrew, she sang in Arabic, she even sang in Japanese, and she sang in English. Unfortunately, I don't think she ever did tour the United you know, Kingdom or she ever toured Australia. In 77, when she toured Canada, she had a, an obsessed fan uh, try to kidnap her. And, uh, basically, uh, the leader did a lot of her performance at the Olympia, which we're going to be visiting today. But then it all tragically ended at the on the 3rd of May, 1987, when Jalita died in her house in the north of uh, Paris. And her suicide note said, uh, forgive me, life is unbearable. So today, I'm going to go show you the places where Jalita lived. So let's go. I've just passed uh, Parsi Station. Now, I'm looking for 7 Rue de Ankara. It's probably called that because the Turkish embassy is nearby. Now, there's a photograph of Dalida's French ID that actually says she lived at 7 Rue de Ankara. So, that was when she was married to her first husband. And this is the exact location where he shot himself in the head in the 1970s. So, that was her first husband.
All right, so this is Avenue du President Kennedy for JFK. And here it is, Rue de Ancre on the 16th part of Paris. Just gonna look for number seven. So two, uh, somebody famous lived here too. Look for number seven. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking number seven. Number three, five. Yep, I'm coming up to it closely. So if that's number five, number seven must be here. Yep, and there, here it is. Rue number seven. Delita married her first husband, Lucien Morris, who was a bit like a manager to her. Married in 1961, they divorced in 62, so they had a really short marriage. It was at this house in like 1970s when uh, Lucien Morris took his own life. So it seems like most of the men that Delita was in love with, they all ended up like uh, taking their own lives. Right now I've just left Victor Hugo in the uh, west of Paris. I'm traveling up to Palace de Chichy of Blanche in the 18th apartment. So this is where the leader lived and died and is buried. So you know, in walking distance you'll find the bust of the leader, the house of the leader and the grave of the leader. Alright I've made it to Blanche right now. So everything about the leader have been walking distance from here. The Olympia Pontelage we formed in that's actually down the road from where she lived. So you'll see it, me visiting it now in the vlog. But where I'm at right now, I might as well just vlog her house, her bus, then her grave. Well, here we are at night time. Olympia Music Hall. This is the location where the leader played many shows here, you know, in the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. If you name a Western artist, you can be sure that they have played a gig here in Paris. Olympia Hall. Now, there's a lot of history since that building. I thought, you know, what a, a way for me to turn transition from, you know, dark into like light. I mean, sure, yeah, I already filmed the cemetery vlogs earlier today, but, you know, this it was the leader's home. Played many gigs here, and, you know, she was, like, well-known. So many times she took the stage at this location, 